Each day, you come in contact with the elements. The trick is to be prepared. Will it be cold, wet, hot, or humid? What type of clothing should you wear? Will you need added protection like an umbrella? Will the weather change and will you be ready for it when it does? Every day you make this judgment and hope it's a logical one and one that provides for your safety and well-being. Like the weather, there are other elements that you come in contact with every day, many of them at work. And just as you prepare for the elements outside, you also need to prepare for the elements at work. Ultraviolet and electron beam curing, commonly known as UVEB curing, is a growing technology used to manufacture products that you come in contact with every day. Maybe you don't realize it, but UV and EB curable materials are used to make many products including adhesives for compact discs and DVDs and resistant coatings for automotive parts, eyeglasses, wood furniture and flooring. And because these formulas cure instantly, products are produced faster with far less waste and lower energy costs as compared to traditional technologies. In addition, UV and EB curable materials are generally solvent-free, further reducing the environmental impact of this technology as compared to traditional systems and processes. In short, UV-EB technology is energy efficient and beneficial to the environment, and it can be safely handled in the workplace. Let's discuss how. UV and EB formulas are comprised primarily of monomers and oligomers, which are the building blocks needed to properly cure different coatings, inks, and adhesives using ultraviolet or electron beam curing units. Unlike some solvents and other chemicals used in traditional technologies, monomers and oligomers have been shown to be low in acute toxicity, and they are not known to cause chronic health effects. In addition, monomers and oligomers are not listed or regulated as carcinogens. Monomers and oligomers may, however, be irritating to the eyes and skin if exposure occurs. These irritating effects can range from slightly to severely irritating. Skin irritation is the most frequent health effect seen. Skin irritation is also known as contact dermatitis. Symptoms of irritation or contact dermatitis may look like poison ivy. There may be a rash or redness, swelling and blistering of the affected area. These effects may not be seen until a day or two after the exposure. Skin sensitization or allergic skin reactions can also occur, although this effect is not common. Skin sensitization may look like contact dermatitis, but it is due to an allergic response to a particular chemical. If a worker becomes sensitized to one of these chemicals, he or she may be more likely to become allergic to other monomers and oligomers as well. These potential health effects are easily controlled through the use of engineering controls, personal protective equipment, and good work practices. Let's look into each more closely. Engineering controls. Engineering controls should be the first line of defense against exposure to any chemical. Processing equipment should be manufactured and installed to eliminate or minimize chemical exposures. Procedures for transferring and handling chemicals in your facility should also minimize exposure when possible. Personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, is often used in conjunction with engineering controls and good work practices. PPE is sometimes used as the first line of defense against exposure to chemicals. Eye protection. As with most industrial chemicals, safety glasses must be worn when working with UV and EB formulas. If you are spraying these materials or involved in an operation that has a high splash potential, wear a face shield in addition to safety glasses or safety goggles. For employees working with ultraviolet process equipment, it is recommended that protective eyewear provide UV protection as well as chemical protection. Skin protection. As with solvents and other industrial chemicals, chemical protective gloves must be worn when working with UV and EB formulas. For the industrial setting, heavy nitrile, neoprene, or butyl rubber gloves are recommended. These gloves should be cotton lined if possible. The cotton lining reduces perspiration. 
This is important because sweat increases the potential for dermatitis. For laboratory work, nitrile, neoprene, or butyl rubber gloves are also recommended. These gloves should be of sufficient thickness for the application and duration of exposure. Latex gloves are not recommended when handling UV and EB materials as tests have shown they do not provide adequate protection. When selecting gloves, make sure they are compatible with the other chemicals you are using. In addition to gloves, you should be wearing protective clothing such as a long-sleeve work shirt to cover exposed skin surfaces on your arms. Additional protective equipment can include arm sleeves or a chemically resistant apron to better protect your torso. Canvas or suede shoes should not be worn when working with chemicals. Leather or chemically resistant safety shoes are recommended instead. Overboots made of nitrile, neoprene, or butyl rubber should also be worn if you are going to be involved in a task such as spill cleanup. There are several skin care products on the market designed to protect against or remove industrial chemicals. They are known as barrier creams. There are also creams designed to control perspiration. These are primarily used in summer, when the hot weather can make you sweat more, which can, in turn, lead to a greater risk of dermatitis. Barrier creams should never be used in place of PPE. They should always be used in conjunction with gloves and other protective equipment. Respiratory Protection UV and EB curable materials have very low vapor pressures and are not expected to become airborne when handling and processing them at room temperature. General room ventilation is usually adequate for this type of situation. However, if aerosols or vapors are generated, engineering controls such as a spray booth or local exhaust ventilation should be installed. Respiratory protection is also recommended when aerosols or vapors are generated. Air purifying respirators are sufficient for most of these scenarios. Respirators should be NIOSH approved and respirator cartridges should be protective against organic vapors. Pre-filters should also be used for aerosol protection. It is important to note that some of these materials have a distinct odor even at room temperature. Presence of an odor does not necessarily mean there is a hazard or that you are being overexposed. The odor is due to the specific chemistry of these materials, and with some products, the odor may be noticeable at very low concentrations. Personal Hygiene In addition to PPE, personal hygiene is essential. Wear clean work clothes every day. If your clothing becomes contaminated, it must be removed immediately. Once that clothing is removed, the affected skin should be washed and clean clothing can then be worn. Contaminated clothes should be sent to a professional laundry that is equipped to clean industrial clothing. Avoid bringing contaminated clothes home. Personal protective equipment, such as gloves, must also be clean. Contaminated protective equipment should be removed immediately. Some PPE can be cleaned and then reused. Disposable gloves and contaminated shoes cannot be cleaned or reused. They must be properly discarded. Hand washing is extremely important. Wash your hands after every task and before eating, drinking, smoking, and using the restroom. It is recommended that jewelry not be worn. However, if worn, be sure to wash thoroughly around and beneath the jewelry. RadTech recommends that you shower at the end of each work shift. If shower facilities are not available at your workplace, it is recommended you shower as soon as possible after your shift. Lastly, general personal hygiene practices apply to any industrial setting. Do not eat, drink, or smoke in the work area. Housekeeping Proper housekeeping is also critical. This is because UV-EB formulas do not evaporate or dry over time. They will remain present and chemically active until they are cured by an ultraviolet light or electron beam. Therefore, good housekeeping practices are essential to prevent accidental contact with these materials. Remember, too, that many of these materials are clear. If they are present or on a common surface, and mostly unnoticeable, anyone can accidentally and unknowingly come in contact with them. Be sure to clean tools, benchtops and other surfaces, doorknobs, railings, floors, 
and any other area or article that may have come in contact with the UV-EB formulas. Cleaning up. Cleanup of UV and EB materials is simple. Absorbent rags and a standard industrial soap and water solution can be used to wipe surfaces and equipment. Some companies use more caustic solutions or hot soapy water solutions. Others use a specific solvent to clean or a combination of cleaners. Check with your supervisor or the formula supplier to determine what is best for your situation. Remember to wear the recommended PPE during cleanup and be sure your gloves are suitable for the method of cleanup you choose. Dispose of rags and cleaning solutions according to your company's policies and local, state, and federal regulations. Handling spills. Spills, of course, are unwanted. But you should be prepared in the event a spill occurs in your facility. Follow your company's procedures for handling spills. If you are permitted and trained to perform spill cleanup, wear appropriate protective equipment including safety glasses and a face shield, and nitrile, neoprene, or butyl rubber gloves, apron, and overboots as a minimum. Other protective equipment, such as a respirator and a chemically protective suit, may be needed depending on the situation. Stop the spread of the spill, if needed, with booms or through diking. Soak up the spilled liquid with absorbent rags or inert solid materials, such as sand or earth. Place or shovel the absorbed material in a suitable container such as a lined drum. Then wash the spill area with a strong detergent and water solution. Dispose of solid wastes and wastewater according to your company's policies and local, state, and federal regulations. Always refer to the product's material safety data sheet first and contact the formula supplier for additional information if needed. First Aid As with all chemicals, if you do come in contact with UV and EB materials, appropriate first aid measures must be followed. For skin contact, immediately remove contaminated clothing and protective equipment and wash the affected area thoroughly with mild soap and lukewarm or cool water until the material is thoroughly removed. Seek medical attention if irritation develops or any symptoms persist. Solvents are not recommended for removing contamination or washing skin as they may penetrate the skin, allowing absorption of the solvent as well as the UV and EB materials. For eye contact, flush eyes thoroughly with clean, lukewarm water for at least 15 minutes. Seek medical attention if irritation develops or any symptoms persist. If overcome by vapors or aerosols, move to fresh air. Seek medical attention if needed. Although unlikely, if ingested, do not induce vomiting. And if you are able, drink one or two glasses of water to dilute the ingested material and seek medical attention. Obviously, persons not fully conscious or capable of swallowing water should avoid this step and immediately seek medical attention. Material Safety Data Sheets and labels. Another important tool when handling any industrial chemical is the product's Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS. An MSDS describes specific health effects and contains other safety-related information for a particular product. Review and understand the MSDSs for the UV and EB formulas with which you are working. Product labels also provide health effects information and often contain other pertinent information such as first aid and spill procedures. Labels are affixed to the product containers, which you will see in the warehouse, on the shop floor, and in the laboratory. Label information is concise but consistent with the information found in the MSDS. Your company training program should include a review of the MSDSs and any other pertinent safety literature. Product label information should also be reviewed. More than 2 million people safely handle UV and EB curable materials every day at over a half million workstations around the world. This video, your company's training program, and the material safety data sheets for the products you are working with will assist you in the safe use and handling of these materials. 
so each day come to work prepared. Review and follow your company's safety procedures. Read MSDSs and labels and follow the safety guidelines illustrated in this video. Last, but certainly not least, use common sense and make good choices. The combination of these good practices will protect you no matter what elements you face. RADTECH has provided you with this safe handling information as part of our effort to promote the safety of UV EB technology. For further information on UV and EB equipment safety and the proper storage and disposal of UV and EB curable materials, please view a related video, UV EB Curing A Safe Choice, which is available on CD from RADTECH. You can contact RADTECH at www.radtech.org or by email at uveb at radtech.org.